Hey, you, babe. Say, how about a... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you will hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Rivera Brooklyn. As you'll find out later, I'm in show business. But right now, there's no business in show business, so I'm working in a beauty shop. We have some very interesting clients. Last week, I gave a gorgeous Marcel to a man. He's a famous wrestler. This week, Lady Brittingham made an appointment for a permanent, and after I was assigned to it... I found out it was for a cocker spaniel. Today I'm giving my regular scalp treatment to Dr. Neil Vanderdam in his office. He's a young psychiatrist, good-looking, muscular, but the sensitive type and a little loused up. Poor Dr. Vanderdam liked to lie down on his consultation couch, and while I gave him the scalp treatment, I sort of gave him a little psychiatric treatment, too. Mm. <laughs> Just relax now, doctor. Uh. Close your eyes, please. Mm. Well, will you look at the way that fuzz is growing. Yes, it is growing, isn't it? Why, the top of your head is beginning to look like a pussy willow in full bloom. Is that good? Oh, it's wonderful. I can't wait to see a breeze rippling over it. <laughs> well, we certainly have worked hard in encouraging it to come popping up, haven't we? Oh, uh, yes, yes, we have. Now, last week, when I gave you your regular treatment, you were telling me about your unhappy childhood. Oh, yes. Well, I, I was a pathetic little creature, mm -hmm. you know. And besides, I worried. I lost my hair from worry. Well, what'd you worry about? Losing my hair. Oh. And besides, nobody liked me. Oh, what makes you say that? Did you have any unhappy incidents in your childhood that made you feel that way? Well, when I was pretty young, I... I fell very much in love with a girl who was older than I. <laughs> I was about nine, and she was 23. And you didn't understand why she couldn't get interested in you. Well, weren't you being a little optimistic? That isn't it. She kept calling me Winnie the Pooh. You see, my real name is Winfield, and it got so every time I'd see a girl, I'd think, Pooh. Naturally, I didn't fall in love again until I was ten. Oh, well, gee, that's a shame. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, they used to call me Bozo. I hated the name and fought with every kid who called me that until I got a new nickname. What was it? They called me Slugger. And I remember another time Maisie, when Maisie, we were talking about me and my problem. Oh, yeah, excuse me, but go on. Well, pretty soon, I got the nickname of Pooh, and, and I couldn't stand it. I hated the other kids because I knew what they were thinking about me whenever now, I go wait out, they... a minute. I thought you said the other kids hated you. Now, it's you who hated them. Did I say that? Yes, you did. Yes. Oh, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, Doctor. Oh. I'll make like $150 a week private secretary. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Down to Van Damme's office. Dr. Van Dam is terribly busy right now. I see. You are Mr. Atterbury's secretary? 
Atterbury. Well, very well put Mr. Atterbury on. I'll talk to him. Atterbury, good heavens, he's the richest man in town. Oh, quiet, I'll... Doctor. No, indeed, I shan't put Dr. Vanderdam on until you put Mr. Atterbury on first. No, no, Maisie, give me that phone, please. Shh, huh? quiet. Uh, My dear child, you called Dr. Vanderdam. Dr. Vanderdam did not call you. I suggest you put Mr. Atterbury on now and check with Emily Post later. Uh How do you do, Mr. Atterbury? Uh, One moment now, put Dr. Vanderdam on. uh, Don't give me (laughs) that. Maisie, hand me that phone Mm -hmm. quick. You mustn't be in too much of a hurry. No. Amazing. All you... right, all right. Straighten your tie up first. All right. Now, here. Uh, hello? Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Atterbury. Yes? Yes, I believe I can help you. Well, I think that could be arranged, sir. Very well, Mr. Atterbury. You, you bring her right over. I'll be here in my office. Goodbye, sir. Is that the Atterbury that they say stole half of New York, a third of New Jersey, and all of Connecticut? That's the man. Hmm. He's the biggest legitimate crook in the country. Yeah. He steals everything legally, I guess. He's a very powerful man. I hear he gets at least one bomb in every mail. What's his problem? Oh, well, I've heard the other psychiatrists talking about it. Mm -hmm. He's got a daughter who never goes anywhere and stays in all the time. He... He's worried about her. Well, most fathers are worried when their daughters go out all the time. I suppose she's got one of those faces that curdle a jar of cold cream. No, no, I understand she's very pretty. Oh, well, I don't get it. But I guess it wouldn't be hard to figure out. Oh, indeed? Mm-hmm. Y- you seem to think there's nothing to these cases of mine. Oh, no. I, I know they're tough for you, but I can see right through all the problems. I don't know. I guess it's just a combination of woman's intuition and being naturally bright. <laughs> now, now, look, Miss Revere. I've done a lot of studying, and I've gained a certain prominence in my profession. Oh, no, That word again. <laughs> Please. And, well, anyway, I'm, I'm quite confident that no scalp masseurs is better qualified than I to treat mental cases. Now, just a minute. Maybe no scalp masseurs is better qualified, but that's not what I am. I'm really a showgirl. Oh, uh, that changes the picture. I didn't realize you had those qualifications. Although I should have known if I just looked a little more closely. When I first came here, Doctor, you looked so close, you got your nose caught in my necklace. I'm nearsighted! Oh, don't shout. Well, all I'm saying, Maisie, is that there's nothing a person with your background can do to... Ease the deep inner pains that people have. Oh, that's so silly. What do you do then? I just give them a little bicarbonate of soda. (laughs) Yes, but Mr. Atterbury, this takes time. I'm not going to pay you a price like that. All you do is sit back and take no twelve I don't tell you. Hello. Hello. Seems to be quite a discussion going on in there. The father's haggling over the price for me. Oh. I guess you're Miss Atterbury, aren't you? Yes. I suppose you've heard of my father, haven't you? And how. Quite a character, isn't he? Is it true that he almost sold the state of Rhode Island to Connecticut? I don't know. My father would do just about anything. What's he bringing you here for? I'm supposed to be a little nuts. Oh. Are you? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Mm. I stay pretty much at home all the time. I have a hobby I'm interested in. And I refuse to go where there are people who'll stare at me and whisper. I just can't stand it. Hey, what are you doing with that coin in your hand? Where'd it go? <laughs> Here it is. Well, I'll be darned. Now it disappears again. Like that. Well, now I'll make it appear again. <gasps> Ooh, it's turned into a lighted cigarette. Oh. And here's another one. <laughs> And another one. And if you don't happen to smoke, here's a package of chewing tobacco. Why, that's wonderful. See, you're good. You're a real magician. Well, I'm not bad. This is my hobby, and I've got lots of really sensational stunts at home. Uh I bought every trick I could, and I hired wonderful magicians to teach me. That's about the only advantage I've ever found in having money. Forget you. 
Of course, I wouldn't know about money. Never haven't had much of it for very long. I hope you never do. I hate it. Gee, to think a good-looking gal like you never goes out. Why, I've been all over the world. Singing in cafes, dancing in musical comedies, working circuses, legion conventions. Oh, gee, that's what I've always wanted to do. Is it? Well, you can do it if you want to. Me? You know, I'm getting tired of this business of trying to grow hair on barren heads. I think we could work up a good magic act. W- would you like that? Oh, I'd love it, but... Oh, quick, what? quick, before your father comes out, here's the address of Squirman Herman. Mm-hmm. He's one of the biggest little crooks in town, but he's a good agent. Oh. Tell him I sent you and show him your trick. See if he's interested, and in the meantime, get in touch with me, Maisie Revere, at Antoine Hasslinger's Hairdo Heaven. Oh, what will my father say? Well, he's been wanting to get you out. Just go out and stay out, and don't use your real name. A squirm and Herman will shove you in his filing cabinet and hold you for ransom. Okay, I'll do it. Good. I want to see Maisie Revere, and I want to see her right away. Oh, boy, this is it. Please, you must keep your voice down, and you cannot go back in there. I forbid it. Oh, you do, eh? Help, Miss Revere. What's the matter, Antoine? Ah, there you are. This, this monster here demands to see you. Please, sir, do lower your voice. There are ladies present among the women in my beauty salon. Get out of here before I scoop you up in a butterfly net. Well, really. In case you don't recognize me, I'm Lionel Atterbury. And if I decide I don't like you, I'll buy the lease on this building and have you thrown out on your curly blonde head. Atterbury? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Atterbury. I, I didn't realize it was you. Go, go right ahead. Sure, I'll be just as atrocious as you want to. Oh, certainly. I'll plug up my ears. All right, Miss Revere, where's my daughter? I haven't the slightest idea, Mr. Atterbury. Oh, yes, you have. Aren't you the one who advised her to leave her home and become a gypsy? For sure. I told her she ought to do her magic tricks professionally. What's wrong with that? I thought you wanted her to get out among people. Yes, but she's left home for good, according to the note I found. Well, I advise her to do that, too. And I'm just the person who can do it, too. Mr. Atterbury, I have news for you. I'm somebody who isn't afraid of you. And I'm going to tell you why your daughter hates to go out anywhere. Because she knows people are pointing at her and saying, there's the daughter of the biggest white-collar crook of the country. What's that? Well, you are, aren't you? What's worse, you're proud of it but your daughter's ashamed of you. Now, look here, Miss Revere. Nancy's never been out much. She's never been away from my protection, and this is a tough, hard-boiled city. Uh, If anything happens to her, I'll hold you personally responsible. uh, Now you find her and bring her back to me before something shocking happens to you. I'll find her, but I don't think she'll come back until you develop a heart. And right now, all you are is two pieces of cloth with a stone in between. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. That's enough of the vibrator, baby. Okay, Dr. Vanderdam. Ah, now how do you feel? Uh, Ah, 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 ah. You're tensing uh, up your scalp again. Oh. Relax and let your ears slide back down where they belong. Oh, I can't help it, Maisie. Oh, and for a while I had your scalp so loose I was afraid it would slip under your collar. Maisie, I... 
I guess you're going to handle Nancy Atterbury's case, aren't you? Well, Doctor, you're the one who told me I didn't know anything about psychiatry, and I'm going to show you I do. Oh, the trouble we have from you, amateur. But I'm going to give her a little occupational therapy. Yeah, you, you know what that is, don't you? Certainly I do. You, you don't think I'm completely ignorant, do you? Mm, well... Never mind answering that. There's one thing you've got to think about, Maisie. And that is what is going to happen to a sensitive girl like Nancy Atterbury if she does her tricks in front of an audience and flops. Maybe even gets booed. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that. Oh, it's a bad enough thing for a person who isn't sensitive. I know. I I did a little magic myself. And I never got over the time the rabbit got his hind leg caught in my shirt. How they laughed at me. Oh, gee, if they laugh at Nancy, it'll just about kill her. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to have to give her some special training. Oh. If she lays an egg, she's got to know how to make an omelet out of it. Hello, Hyman. Maisie Revere, am I glad to see you. How about loan me ten bucks, then? I'm not that glad to see anybody. Ah. Business is slightly terrible. Yesterday, all I did was book a violinist down to the Staten Island Ferry. Had to supply him with a tin cup, too. Oh, well, gee, I saw a wonderful act I was going to send in to you. A guy and a monkey doing a hand balancing act. Oh, that sounds good. What happened to it? I don't know. Clash of temperament, I guess. Anyway, the monkey's doing a single now. Well, send him in if you see him. Give him one of my cards. Okay. Say, Maisie... A girlfriend of yours who does a magic act was in here. Yeah, that's what I came to ask you about. Um, how was she, Herman? Well, frankly, Maisie, the tricks are good. But she hasn't had much experience, has she? No, but how could you tell? Well, she didn't have a very smooth line of patter, and besides, she let me collect some advance commission from her. Herman, huh? you chiseler, you burglar... You'd eat Brussels sprouts just to rob a cabbage of its young. So I'm human, and I was hungry. So sue me. Besides, I think I can book her. Yeah? Especially if you'd work with her. Oh, well, say, I think I will, Herman. Did she leave an address and a phone number? Yeah, here it is, right here. Thanks. And uh, we may work a little mind-reading routine into the act, too. Good. Can you read minds, Maisie? Yeah. Huh. And I can read your mind right now. You're wondering if you couldn't have gotten a bigger advance commission from my innocent friend. Maisie, girl, you're wonderful. You're absolutely right. Hmm. Oh, sit down, Maisie. Do you think my father's detectives will find me here? Eventually, but not right away. Oh, Maisie, I'm terribly worried about this whole business. What if they don't like me? I'll just die. Well, don't worry, Nancy. He liked the tricks. But you need a line of patter, and uh, we need a gimmick. Oh, what's a gimmick? Well, a gimmick is something you need in a case like this. It's something that makes an act seem funnier than it really is. Oh. Well, I'll get my equipment ready and give you an idea of what I can do, Maisie. Fine. Oh. Oh, you better hide. I'll answer. All right. Hello. I'm looking for a girl. Well, I do. She's just moved in around here somewhere, and I, uh... I, 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 did you say what you do? Oh, baby, pucker up those rosy red lips and smooch me. Go on, beat it, shorty. Oh, now, look, gorgeous. I'm looking for a girl who lives around here someplace. Here's a picture of her. Hey, George! There's a guy out here making passes at me. Don't bother me. I'm busy. <laughs> Some husband, I'll say. Now... What's the name of this girl you're looking for, Flatfoot? Her name is Nancy Atterbury, but uh, she might be uh, living under another name. See? Oh. Trying to avoid you, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, if I see her, I'll tell her a detective is looking for her. No, 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 for gosh sakes, lady. No, no, just call me at this number. Here's my card. Hmm. Herschel Gefiltefolter. Mm -hmm. All kinds of investigations. All kinds. Okay, Seamus, I'll let you know if I see her. Now beat it. So long, baby. Was that really a detective? You bet it was. And it sounds like he's still listening at the door. Get back and I'll open it quick. Look out! 
Now, scram, bum. The next time you're peeking through the keyhole, I'll squirt ink in your eye. All right, goodbye. Molly's well, gone for good. And what's more interesting, he gave me an idea for the gimmick. What is it? Well, we need a fall guy, a patsy, a schnook. And I'm thinking of a beautiful one right now. Who? Dr. Vanderdam, the young psychiatrist. He used to do some magic, too. So the way we work it, he's the magician and we're the assistants. He messes up the tricks and the assistants do them right as if there was nothing to them at all. Oh, that'll be funny. We'll have to work it out, though. Yeah. Well, I- I'm going to get Dr. Vanderdam right now. Now, what about the mind-reading stunt? How do we do that? Well, I'll explain it later. Oh, and I've got another idea. The doctor makes a rabbit appear. I make the rabbit disappear. And the skunk appears instead. <clears throat> That's fine, Nancy. And the skunk makes the audience disappear. <laughs> Is it unusually hot in this dressing room, or am I just nervous? You're nervous, Doctor. Oh. How about you, Nancy? Oh, I'm not no nervous. I'm, 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 oh, I'm scared to death. There's a monkey act on ahead of you, Maisie. Yeah, man, I hope the audience won't think we're an encore. Nah, uh, you'll be great. But in case you aren't, I got a taxi waiting at the stage door with a motor running. Sounds like the call boy's wearing brass knuckles. Come in. Aha! So here you are. I knew I'd catch up with you sooner or later. Mr. Atterbury. Atterbury? The Mr. Atterbury? Herman, stop drooling. Oh, Father, please, get out. Nancy, get out of that satin bait. Right here? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing here, Doctor? Are you a nightclub performer on the side? Mr. Atterbury, this whole thing is in the nature of a... Therapeutic treatment for Nancy Ugh. and fumbled a rabbit years ago, and tonight I intend to fumble one again. This time on purpose. Yeah, have you got any inhibitions you'd like to get rid of, Mr. Atterbury? Yes, I'd like to wring your neck. Well, see me after the show. <sighs> oh, Maisie, my fingers feel stiff and awkward. Well, that's fine. That's what happens to everybody before they go on. It won't happen out there. And remember, when the people laugh. They're laughing with you. If anybody enjoys your act, I'll... I'll... Will you retire, Dad? Yes. Mr. Atterbury, you've just made this very, very worthwhile. Uh, Mr. Atterbury, uh, could I talk to you for a moment as one crook to another? What is it? You're wrong, folks. Oh, 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 maybe. What about the mind reading? You never told me anything about it. Not a thing. Oh, well, just blindfold yourself and guess. I'll give you the hottest tips anybody ever heard. Now, let's go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mazila has been passing among you, getting information from you, which she will attempt to pass on to me by the power of the mind alone. As you see, I am blindfolded, and I have no idea, but no idea, what the thoughts will be. And may I add, ladies and gentlemen, that we positively defy anybody to duplicate this fantastic feat. Are you ready? Yes. Proceed. All righty, let's get down to business. What's the color of this lady's dress? The color of the lady's dress Stop. is... Uh, Stop. That's not it. Go ahead. The color of the lady's dress. Stop. The color is... Go. The color is... Red and green. Green. Hurrah! (laughs) Now, what do I have in my hand here? Watch out. This isn't an easy one. What is it? A watch. Amazing. And what kind of a watch is it? I am giving her no hints, ladies and gentlemen. You may risk... Assured of that. It's a wristwatch. <laughs> and now this gentleman here has given me something to hold. Come, come now, concentrate. And let's not spend all night on it. It's a coin. <laughs> what amazing power the human mind has. Now, then, what is the occupation of this man here? Oh, this is very easy. This is a pipe. He sells tobacco? No. You don't seem too sure of the answer. Try again. He's a plumber. That is absolutely <laughs> Now, 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 see if you could tell me uh, 
where, where this gentleman is from. This is very difficult, and I hope you won't get sick and have to take some, uh, take some, uh... Medicine? Medicine what? Medicine Wisconsin! That is a I lost ten pounds. Well, kids, you put on a swell show for those people, and they loved it. Oh, I'll never worry about people again. They were just wonderful to us. <laughs> well, it looks like I've lost a customer. <laughs> Did you see it, Bob? Oh, yes, and it was great. It was marvelous. I loved every minute. Oh, I'm so glad. Why, Mr. Atterbury, you sound almost human. Are you going to be a nice guy now? Yeah, absolutely. And to show you the way I feel, I'm going to give you all the press. Oh, how nice. Oh, that's well, Dad. Well, pardon me for being suspicious, but what is it? I've had some experience with presents that blew up in my face. But I've just been talking with Herman, the agent, and I'm giving you your whole act so nobody else will own a part of it. I don't get it. Herman just sold me the whole act for $10,000 cash. Oh, Dad. Well, what do you know? There's still one being born every minute. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, a little bit of show business did a lot for those people. Mr. Atterbury used to be the kind of a fellow who'd pour water on a drowning man. And now he's retired from business and spent all summer as a clown in one of the big circuses. He's happy, too. Well, Nancy and Dr. Vanderdam got married. He was holding her hands to show her a card trick one day. And the next thing they knew, they were kissing each other. And darned if his hair hasn't started to grow back in. I must say he's a better psychiatrist since I gave him the Revere five-minute psychoanalytical brush-off. It's just common sense, of course, but the trouble with common sense is it just isn't very fashionable. Well, our magic act broke up with the announcement that a baby would be arriving and I'm looking for a new job. If you hear of anything, let me know. Well, meanwhile, come on, please. Get the You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie was written by John L. Green. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Loreen Tuttle, Hans Conried, Arthur Q. Bryan, Sidney Miller, Frank Nelson, and Peter Leeds. John Heaston speaking. (laughs) 